ESPN threw the story out there. And that blew up in LSU's face, which I think he was going to go to Michigan at that point. Then we have the rant in 2012 with Ole Miss when he discussed some of the team, some of the team's seniors. Remember that he says he went off on these players and said they're hard work and he's saying that's unacceptable. And then he climaxed it with listening to the in true less miles fashion. You find them, you throw your arms around them, you give them a big kiss on the mouth if you're a girl. And then everybody in the room went went laughter. That's the kind of things we'll remember less miles from, I, I believe. Good man. Uh, had a lot of memorable moments, but I, I think his time was worn out. Was worn out. And uh, that was the end. So we're going to see what happens in the future, what happens this season. Um, look for LSU to really do well Saturday. Typically in these situations, players come to the aid of their coach. Their coach is currently trying to keep that staff together. So I, I, LSU's going to do really, really well Saturday. Um, usually teams come together in crisis. In a bad situation, this is a bad situation. So um, I see LSU doing really well this week. But we'll see what happens, you know, at what going forward. And like I said, the, the three names are gonna, you're going to hear more of is going to be, you know, Herman and uh, Jimbo Fisher and David Shaw, I think, are be three names that will definitely be thrown around. Uh, we'll see what LSU does. So, well, in these last 15 minutes, I'm going to discuss just break down this Atlanta Falcon um, and New Orleans Saints game. And this has some this has some interesting tidbits to it. First off, though, I, I have to hear it's just me personally, and I, I know you guys love this music. Is um, let me get to it. All right, let's see where this is. In, this is like the best music on Monday. Best music we can hear. On a Monday. Here we go. Some Monday Night Football from the Dome, the Mercedes-Benz Superdome. Tonight, the New Orleans Saints and the Dirty Birds battling it out. Big-time rivalry game. Tune in, guys, girls. Watch these Saints try and get together. Put together a full game on both sides of the ball. This is a huge, huge, huge game uh, for both teams, really. And we all know one thing. (laughs) That dome is going to be electric. Electric fire. Fire, fire, fire tonight. It's always loud in there, but man, when the dirty birds come calling, whew. Excitement. From the opening bell to the last bell. It's going to be serious, serious, serious football. Hard knocking, big plays, weird things that'll happen. Who can ever forget Steve Gleason in the block punt 2006? That was the best. The Katrina game, everyone refers to. And it's just one of many, 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 many 
over the last 10 years that the Falcons and the Saints have been involved in. One key statistic that, that I want to throw out to you, Saints, the Saints have won 15 of these last 20 games. Um, they swept them last year. All these games are tight. But the Saints have gotten the better of them. They just always come to play against the Falcons. And tonight's no example. I think we're gonna I think the Saints is gonna are gonna get a tremendous game. I, I I really think this is going to be their game tonight. You're gonna get a high scoring game. Without question. Neither of these teams can stop the pass. And for the most part, with the exception of last week with the Saints, they can both get it up there. Both teams pass. Saints are are always great when they throw the ball in the dome. When they go outside the dome, eh, it can get it can get a little dicey. But they've always been able to throw the football in the domes. So that's that's going to be an exciting game. Now breaking it down. Um, by the way, w- <clears throat> Willie Sneed will not play in the game tonight, which makes the Saints' uh, receiving core a little thin. Hopefully somebody can step up to replace Sneed. I think the the key here, both teams are definitely going to be able to throw the football. The key is whoever wins the rushing battle. Is it Devo- Devontae Freeman for the Falcons? Or is Mark Ingram going to get it done? That's going to be the key. Whoever runs the football effectively will win this football game. Reason being is it takes pressure off the quarterbacks. I mean, they're, they're going to get their yards regardless. But whoever runs the football is going to win this football game. The other key is red zone defense. See... And, and, and third down efficiency. I have always been, when I break down games, I look at three things. I look at red zone defense. I look at third down efficiency. And who runs the football. If you take a look at those three things, if you win those three things, I would say 95% of the time you win the game. Those are the three keys. They really, really are because you can control the game with that. And red zone defense, you force them to three or get a turnover, it's huge, game-changing. So I think when you break it down, those are going to be the keys. Now, the Saints had excellent red zone defense in their last game. By the way, they're going to have to have another corner step up as P.J. Williams and that horrible injury he suffered last week. That's two guys. So you're not looking at a third string corner cornerback that's going to have to play for the Saints. Right now, if you if you look at if you look at this situation with these two teams, okay? It, they're really really even. I think tonight being that the Saints have not won a game and they feel like they should be 2 and 0. This isn't a team that's down on on their situation. If anything, they're up and they want to finish. Sanctions need to put together a full game. Atlanta's obviously got weaknesses in their secondary. Now, both these teams are pretty good against the run. Saints a little better yardage wise. It's not, nothing really major, about eight yards difference. But again, here's a, stati- a statistic. The Falcons lead. That makes me kind of eh. Is 
The Saints are giving up 42% of third downs. It's a lot. A lot of conversions given up. Which are th- those com- conversion percentages allowed are either drive killers or drive makers. Falcons are 38.1% allowed. Not that much better, but still better. Um, third down conversion percentage. Saints are at 29%. That's, they they got to get that a lot better, too. And that was due to them not being able to convert in last week. Falcons, on the, they're at 34.8. So, you know, you, you have the numbers here. I, I think that tonight is you're going to have to see guys step up that normally aren't stepping up. I think the Saints' key defensive acquisitions in the offseason, Nick Fairley, James Laurinaitis, they're going to have to do their thing. Really, really bring their – their defense is really going to have to step up tonight and play a game like they did last week. That's the key, guys. Those three things to look for tonight. This crowd is going to bring it, and that that is going to be what is going to be huge tonight. Matt Ryan likes to make calls at the line of scrimmage. He loves to audible into a running play. I mean, Dirk Cutter, it's going to be a fast-paced game. But that's one thing Saints fans are key in is not allowing these checks to be made. Pressure, pressure, pressure. At Saints, defensive coordinator Allen, he's he's going to have to get to Matt Ryan. Another matchup to watch is Jacob Tammy, the uh, Falcons' tight end, working against the Saints linebackers, working against Jarius Bird or Kenny Vaccaro tonight. And vice versa, Kobe Fleener. Can this guy step up? Can he step up? He has not done it in two games. Fleener has to step up. That's going to be key to this offense tonight. But look for Ryan to go to Jacob Tammy down in the red zone. He he did it last weekend. So from a fantasy from a fantasy perspective. All in, excuse me, all in tonight. If you're looking for a good, really good tight end play, definitely Jacob Tammy. Running backs for Atlanta, I, I, I'm a little un, uncertain there. But in this kind of a game, you have to start all your players. Tevin Coleman would be a good a good play for the Falcons. Uh, Kobe Fleener, I'm not so sure. If you if you ha- if you have to have him go, I would go. I just I haven't I can't trust the guy so far. But he definitely the recipe for the Saints is definitely Kobe Fleener getting it done. Julio Jones, Brandon Cooks, they'll have big games, big time games. I'm telling you guys, it is going to be a great game to watch. Tight, tightly contested. Going to be points being scored. Don't be, don't be surprised early on if there's not a whole lot of points scored because defenses usually step up in the first part of the game, particularly defenses that are much aligned as the Saints and Falcons are. You may see a low-scoring first half, like a 14-10, something like that, but it's going to kick up a notch in the second half. It's going to be like a track meet. But don't miss it. Do not miss it. Because it's, it's going to be one of the best games uh, of the year. So now to end the show, I'm going to give you my pick if you're thinking about uh, taking a look on the against the spread side of it. The Saints right now are, depending on what you got, they're either 1-1 one one or 0-2. Oh if you got the Giants at minus 2.5 or where I don't know where you'd have found that, but that's what you would have gotten if you collected 
normally I'm going to go with the Saints being one and one ATS just because.